What's happening, people? So, this is an extra roll bite wing that I took on a doctor not that long ago, actually, during a training session. And the doctor, after reviewing the bite wing, was a wee bit concerned about what's happening at the apex of number 18, mesial and distal roots. So she was actually going on vacation within the next four or five days and was super concerned that it was going to flare up and ruin her vacation. And it was asymptomatic and we didn't do any clinical, we, they didn't do any clinical testing uh, just yet. But at the time we said, well, let's take a cone beam. Of course, we're there for training. You'll be the first scan. So we, we took a cone beam and uh, we'll take a look at it in a second. But before we take a look at it, pause the video. Pause the video and comment down below what you think the diagnosis is. Of course, you don't have the benefits of clinical testing and things like that. But what's your hunch about what's going on there? So pause the video and comment below. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let's check out the cone beam. Okay, so let's look in the curve slicing tab and let's go ahead and first make this uh, the thinnest slice and let's go ahead and maximize this view. And let's also zoom in on my axial slice just so you can actually see where I currently am with the red line. And uh, let's go ahead and just slice through the scan from a buccal lingual perspective through the mandible and take a look at tooth number 18. All right, so let's start all the way out and let's slice through. And we can see a couple of things. We can see the nerve. Okay, we can also see as we go back and forth, the PDL space looks like it's within normal limits. We can see the lamina dura looks like it's intact. So from this perspective, as we go through the scan like this, really doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the tooth. So let's validate that. Let's look at a different view as well. So let's look at our cross-sectional view. I'm going to zoom in over here a little bit more. And let's change the angle of these slices. Let's bring this back a little bit further. And let's go ahead and, and slice through the cross-sectional views. Okay. And right now I'm on top of the mesial roots. Change the angle a little bit more. And distal root, there's our nerve, super close to the distal root. And I'm really seeing the same thing as the panoramic curve as I slice through. Everything looks very, very normal. And in fact, it was normal. There was really nothing wrong with her. So she could go on vacation. She did go on vacation. She had a good time. It put her mind at ease. It was a really good situation that we were able to take the cone beam and definitively rule out that there was really uh, anything wrong with her tooth. So that's a good thing. So that begs the question, so why was there such a large radiolucency on tooth number 18? Well, let's go back to the cone beam. Let's go back to our panoramic curve and let's look at this again Let me zoom out a little bit further okay and as i slice through just look how much marrow space there is and the actual the nerve is right there and as i go back and forth you can see just how much marrow space there is and how that would present on the 2d image and that is the reason why it's presenting that way now let's look at our cross-sectionals and let's look at the same thing. And you can see the same thing as before. There's just tons of marrow space in that particular area of the mandible. And that's really all that's going on here is the marrow space in the mandible is presenting as a radiolucency on that two-dimensional image. Nothing was wrong with the patient and a nice application of using cone beam.